lifetime of dreams it takes a very special love to carry on. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of strength under extreme pressure on Rescue 911. We begin in Pembroke Pines, Florida, on May 30th, 1993, at the home of Brad Barnum and his family. Take her first it was uh, day before Memorial Day, and we were celebrating my daughter Jillian's first birthday. Neil and Jared and Justin, they had gone over to the pool area. They go to the pool area every day. Uh, it's not something that we even give a second thought to because it's uh, directly across from our house. 13-year-old Neil Malden lived nearby. My friend introduced me to Justin Jared, and... We just started hanging out with each other, and now we're really good friends. We were just playing catch the ball there in the water, and I was like just throwing us both of them, and it just went right through them. Justin went to get the ball. We just thought he got hurt, like hurt his back or something. Justin! Jared just grabbed Justin, and then I realized he'd been shot. When we continued, I got to the scene, and they were both uh, unconscious, and it was, as a dad, it's like your worst nightmare, not knowing who you can help. When 14-year-old Justin Varnum was accidentally electrocuted at the swimming pool near the family's home, his younger brother Jared tried to help him and was also shocked. Their friend ran to tell the boy's father, Brad, what had happened. Jared and Justin, they act We thought he was kidding at first, and he actually was just so frantic. And then he said, I think something's happening. I think they're being shocked. I got to the scene, and they were both uh, unconscious, they were both blue, and it was, as a dad, it's like your worst nightmare, not knowing who you can help first. I didn't know where a breaker was, and I wasn't going to be able to separate them by touching them, because every time I did, it was shocking me. So it was, I stuck my hand down Jared's pants, and Jared just kind of plopped off. I was checking for a pulse. I was trying to see if there was any, any feeling, any respiration. I really couldn't feel anything at all. Pembroke Pines Fire Rescue. Uh, yes, one, two. Their mother, Linda, called for help from the house. At this point, I wasn't hysterical because I didn't know what the situation was over there, and I wasn't quite sure what to tell them even. I worked on Jared, and Jared started to gurgle and seemed like he was at least being able to breathe on his own. When I touched Justin now, the shock was a lot stronger. I remember bracing both arms through his suit and just pulling. And Jared just kind of plopped off. I mean, it was, it was almost so easy. But here's Justin, who's been on the pole the entire time, and I couldn't get him free. I mean, I pulled, and I pulled, and I couldn't get him free. And then to see him... You know, not be able to get free, to see him not be able to come off and not be able to start working on it. I'm thinking the whole time, I got to get him off here. I got to get him off here. <laughs> Justin finally just kicked off. Help! Help! He was not responsive. Jared had initially come out of it, you know, relatively quick. I mean, there was such a sense of relief when he started to respond. It was like, he's going to make it. You felt that. Justin just didn't come back. Jared had a very horrid look on his face. It's, you know, a look that a parent could never forget. Honey, honey, okay, breathe. You always have this feeling that the worst thing that could ever happen in your life is that you could lose a child. And um, at this point, I had things running through my head about losing two of them at the same time. Within five minutes of the call, Pembroke Pines Fire Rescue Units got to the scene, including paramedic Lou okay. Natina. Jared was breathing much easier than his brother Justin. He's breathing. You go ahead and get Justin was moving very little. 
Well, the moans that were coming out of his out of out of him were painful, and he was okay. unconscious. Right. Double check the fence. When paramedic Lieutenant Michael Hole arrived, he took charge of the scene. Usually, an electrocution injury, the external signs are very limited where the internal signs that you can't see may be very devastating. The thermal injury that the electricity would cause could lead to anything from respiratory arrest to cardiac arrest to spinal cord injuries, and I had feared the worst for them. As they were moving them out, they were just making this guttural noise, like coming from the, the deepest part of their insides. That's another one of those snapshots to see your boys in such tremendous pain and know that there was nothing you could do for them. Both brothers were taken to Memorial Hospital where a trauma team was waiting, including emergency physician Doug Smith. Jared was the first patient to arrive. His heart was beating well, he had a good pulse, and he was conscious. The older child, Justin, arrived shortly thereafter. He was not stable by any definition of the term. His breathing was close to non-existent. Justin was essentially dying in front of our eyes. I was in the bed right next to him and I heard the people talking. And I didn't know if he was going to make it. I just didn't think it was fair that he got it so bad, and I didn't. Kids in trouble. Let's see if we can get an airway on this. Come down, Justin. Right, let's take a look. Let's see. Part of his combativeness came from the fact that his body was struggling the best way it could to breathe. Put this kid under. Let's paralyze this kid. To remove the combativeness of the patient, you essentially have to paralyze all muscular activity, all activity except for the heart, and then assume the responsibility of breathing for that patient. We have had a successful stabilization of your son to this point. He said that Jared was starting to respond, but Justin was not responding well. Uh, they said that he was pretty much out of it, and that uh, there was a good possibility that it, it might be a real long night for us. There is no way in the emergency department to tell to what degree that child's brain has been damaged. You don't know. Electrical injuries are a big mystery. They can vary so widely in person to person. I remember it was starting to get daybreak and it just seemed like the night had taken forever. I remember Justin starting to respond and to have him wake up Memorial Day and say, hey dad, it's Memorial Day, and to be able to communicate and have the presence of mind to understand what day it was after all he had been through that night, it was just a uh, real reassuring event. Six months have passed. Their lives are slowly returning to normal. I'm extremely proud of the way that they've come through this. It's an awesome feeling to look at them and realize how how much worse things could have been. And I don't think we realized that until maybe even weeks later. What we were told and what we had to expect, uh, we've been very, very fortunate. We've told the boys a number of times we consider them walking miracles. 14-year-old Justin still has some nerve damage in his left leg. It's hard sometimes. It's very hard. But my dad's always remind me when I do get frustrated that, well, you could be in a wheelchair watching this instead of out here trying to get back. I and I, I'm really happy that I'm back the way I am. 12-year-old Jared has also had some problems, including with his vision. They told me to expect problems running out of breath and um, pulling muscles a lot easier. I have thought about it, that it could have been worse, and I'm just glad that I wasn't, that it wasn't, because I'm just ha thankful for the people that were there. It helped. <laughs> the first time we ever got to go out, we went over to the fire station. The firemen just don't get to see the good side of the situations that they're involved in. There's so many times that all they see is the tragedy. We felt it was very important 
to go back and let them know how much that meant to us, what they had done for our boys that night. They were sitting down. It was one of the best feelings I think I've ever experienced in my career here, to see them walking around, being able to talk. It couldn't have been scripted any better. Neil's a very good kid. He had the presence of mind to come over and get Linda and myself as opposed to trying to help himself if he had done that any one of the three of them might not have made it off the pool area that night we firmly believe that the lord has got something very special in mind for both of our boys that he brought them back from death's door and we feel that he has a special purpose in life for both of them next it was fully involved. Under normal situations, you wouldn't ever go into a house that was this bad. <laughs>